Mushora kuicha ida mwezi na kia yesu. Nagirango tuwa kire muri litera niro yuyu mugorova ya Afrika Guruka. We would like to welcome you to this evening conference of Africa Rise. I come to you to the first time Madame Abasuze Kanagicha Wabira Nawe. But before I say anything, I want to invite my dear wife to say hello to you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Ranarimana! Hallelujah, children of God! Yes, Allah Mujisha! May the Lord bless you. Trabi Furiza, Ichumer Chisa, Africa Guruka. Africa rise. We wish you to draw near to God more than ever. Today and forever. We wish you to have a wonderful time in believing in God more than you've ever believed in Him. Before. Know that He's more than able to do all things. Just the way you believe him is what is going to happen to you. He will receive you as you come before him. May we not go back the same way we came by the end of this week. Whatever we are going to learn from here, the prayers we'll be making here, let them be prayers to transfer us from one level to another higher level. Do not be distracted. But be attentive and open our hearts to believe. We welcome you all in the name of Jesus and we love you. Our dear guests, we have you in our hearts and we care about you. Please know that above all, God knows you and God loves you. Let us prepare our hearts to receive what God has in store for us in this conference. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Mama Angelique. Mama Angelique. Mbere yuko tuwakira, nagira ngotuwanza tukori kimenyezo, chua hano zimuri yunganya, tumenyeshi kirele, tumenyeshi isi tumenyeshi juru kuyu monsaru monsu komeye. Before we welcome the guests, we'd like to do a prophetic act right now to inform the world, to inform the atmosphere, and to inform this place, the spiritual world, that we are here in this conference. We are going to ask the horns to be blown. We have seven horns here that are going to be blown seven times. Let's clap our hands to Lord Jesus.
Let's clap our hands to the Lord Jesus in the shout of joy. Let the atmosphere know that Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth. The heaven know that. The world knows that. Christ is king. He's the king of the world. He's the king in heaven. Let's clap our hands for him again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. May go back to your seats. We want to welcome the guests who are in the midst. Bere na bere tulashima Yesu Kristo utwe mire kugira ikigihe. First off, we want to acknowledge and appreciate the Lord Jesus for allowing us to host this 18th edition of Africa Rise and Shine Conference. And we want to thank all the people who came from all over the world to come and join us in celebrating in this conference. Allow me to welcome all the believers of Zion Temple in Kigali and around the country who are here. May you clap for yourselves. And all the other believers from other churches in Rwanda, thank you for coming. We want to welcome every pastor, whoever is a pastor in any church, whether Zion Temple or any other church in Rwanda, if you are here, please, if you could stand up that we may acknowledge your presence. Every pastor, please stand up. Every pastor from Rwanda, please stand up. Every pastor from Rwanda who is here. Servants of God, receive our hearts. Thank you so much. God bless you. We welcome you here. Now you pastors, help me. To welcome other international guests who have come here. We want to welcome our pastors. All of you pastors who have come from within Rwanda, we love you so much and thank you for coming to join us in celebrating this conference for the next eight for these eight days. May God bless you. Feel at home. Now allow me to welcome. Allow me to welcome every pastor who has come from a country from outside Kigali and all the church members from outside Kigali. Please, if you could stand up wherever you are. Let us wave to them and welcome them in the name of Jesus. Those who are next to them, please hug them on our behalf. Welcome servants of God. Let's welcome the delegation from Burundi led by Bishop Mukwiza who is right here with us on the stage. Please stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. If you Congo, you are a Congo, if the delegation from the DRC Congo is here, please stand up for us to welcome you. Welcome. 
Welcome so much, servant of God from Congo. May God bless you. We hug you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Delegation from Congo Brazzaville. Are they here? The delegation from Congo Brazzaville. Muri Uganda. Muri Uganda. Let's welcome the delegation from Uganda. Pastor Henry, how many did this in the delegation? Pastor Henry and your delegation, a large delegation. You are welcome. You are welcome. Trova Chidiye. Katonda Yeva Ziwe, Katonda Yeva Ziwe. Imani Shimna Chani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wandugu Kutoka Kenya. Our friends from Kenya. Marikwena Pastor Maina. Pastor, with Pastor Maina. Pastor Musafiri. Pastor Musafiri. Karibu Nisana, Karibu. Welcome the delegation from Kenya. Munga Wabariki Sana. May God bless you. Delegation Kufa. Muri Tanzania, the delegation from Tanzania. Tanzania, Karibu. You are all welcome from Tanzania. Mungo Bariki. May God bless you. Bwana sifiwe sana. Praise the Lord. Dekatwa kire na none. Abakozi b'Imana, kozi b'Imana turi kumwe na wano kuva muri Africa yepo. Dr. Jacobus Nomdo. We have a servant of God from South Africa, Dr. Jacobus. Please, if you could stand and wave to the congregation if you're here. Have a Cape Town. He just came from Cape Town. Imani Gumogisha, doctor. God bless you, man of God. Imani Kugirianeza. May the Lord be gracious to you. We are waiting for the delegation from Botswana. I think they're arriving tomorrow. The delegation from Cameroon. By the way, Professor Dr. Benjamin. Led by Professor Dr. Benjamin. Welcome. Welcome to Rwanda. This is your home. May God bless you so Amen. much. Hallelujah. Is the delegation from Africa Coast ah. here? They are there. Karibu sana. Welcome. Imani wa mujisha. May God bless you. Bere data jiri mwa Emmanuel laga sana Claudette. A brother, a jiri mwa ya and gasan and Claudette. Imana iba mujisha mwinshi chana. May God bless you abundantly. Muri tuwebwe. As you are in a ministry. Nano ne tufite mwene data uvuye muri Israel. We have a brother from Israel. Boaz. Boaz. Boaz Fastman. Welcome. Boaz, first man in Numuyuda. Boaz is Jewish. At uh, Jerusalem, he lives in Jerusalem. Kandi niwe uagarariye ministeria chu muri Israel. And he is the representative of, of our ministry in Israel, in Jerusalem. Imana igumugisha Boaz. God bless you, Boaz. Aruvatse. His mother. He's married and is blessed with five children. He has adult grown-up children. They, one of his sons is, uh, is in the Israel Marines. He's a soldier. Welcome, Boaz. This is his first time in Rwanda. And he's already loved in Rwanda. God bless you, Boaz. Be blessed with us. We have our brothers from Belgium. Please, if you could stand up. And all the delegation from Belgium who came with the pastors. Ines. With our sister Ines. <laughs> I can't easily see you from here, but I hope you see me. You're welcome. They represent our church 
uh, Zion Temple Church in Paris, in France. Imana, Ima Mujisha. God bless you. Nanone, Benedata Kuva, Muri, Swiss, Sini Babahari. Do we have the delegation from Switzerland? Our Muri, Swiss, Switzerland. Aguruka to Kure, Zamurgo Kwao. Please raise your hand if you are here. Imana, Ibu. You. We also have another team from France. Where is the delegation from France? If you could stand up where you are. Okay, we are not here yet. The brethren from Sweden. Sweden, Sweden, Sweden. Sweden, are you here? Okay. Now, we are going to be in Italy. We have Pastor Bert from Italy. Welcome, Pastor. I don't know if she came with another uh, other people. But we welcome you in the name of Jesus. We have the brethren from the United States of America. Dr. Samuel Pipim Korang Korantek. Dr. Samuel. Na Professor Leonard and Professor Leonard, Hamena David and David, please, if you could stand for recognition. Imana Iba Mujisha. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Do we have the team from Canada yet? Kuva Canada Varie. Canada, are you here? Okay. Those of you who are next to those from Canada, please thank them on our behalf. Iman Ishim, God bless you. We have another team from the delegation from Ethiopia, from Gabon, and other countries who are still on the way coming. Iman Ishim, praise God. We want to welcome those who are watching us live on TV. Those who are listening on Radio Authentic and Authentic TV who are watching on Authentic TV. We welcome those who are watching live from Facebook Live online. Imana May God bless you from any country where you are now. Let's clap our hands for them as we welcome them. We have many people from many nations who are following us live right now. Do we have the delegation from Australia yet? Okay. And so we welcome you all who are watching us live on Authentic TV, listening to us on Authentic Radio and watching live on Facebook, online. We welcome you all of you. May God bless you. Sinzi nimba harumu munu tukiba giwe mwishiti wawa uri muritu kwewe hano tutawashe kufuga asamu lukoko kwe tunakire. I don't know if there is any visiting uh, guest whose nation we have not mentioned. Please, if you could raise your hand, that we may acknowledge your presence. If you came from a country we didn't mention, please lift up your hand that we may recognize your presence. Okay. I think we have now mentioned all of your countries. Welcome into these eight days where we will be here. You will no longer be a guest. But feel at home. This is your home. May God bless you. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Thank you for welcoming our guests. May God bless him. We're going to go in the time of giving our titan offerings. And to give a quick announcement. 
And tomorrow it will be the beginning of the summit of the seven mountains. In the room that you see in the corner right there, those who have not registered yet, you can go there. So so you can start tomorrow in the morning. You may go and... Uh, We say that tomorrow, that tomorrow morning, at 9, there is a summit on the seven mountains that those who were not able to register and that those who arrived today we are asking that you can go in that room and register yourself. They will tell you all the requirements that you need to know. So for those who want to come to know about the seven mountains in the summit to go and register that there. And this is the time to give our tithes and offerings. To you. God, we thank you. We are going to give another time to give to you. Bless every person who's going to give. Bless the work of their hands. In the name of Jesus. Even those who are here, there are offering to you. But you need to be good to us. This is the first day. Take us from glory to glory. That's how we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. As Azaf and ushers, as they help us, as we do quickly. May God bless you.
Thank you so much, Azaf. God bless you richly. Just sang that Africa rise. But this is your time. And God will fulfill whatever He promised. God is faithful. What He promised. Is gonna fulfill. May God be glorified. Amen. Go come with manna. Because we manna. By way, I'm a Tory. I'm a Hagarie. I'm a Yugo bitanu kanya muraha, abaha magawa na bachunga na mraswa Yesu Kristo na basuza mizi na jaya Yesu. People of God, the leaders in your different, uh, in different organizations and different churches in your different calibers, I want to welcome you all here and I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Munga kawi humbi bibiri, in the year 2000, we started organizing conferences entitled Africa Arise and Shine. Today, as we speak, this is the 18th edition of Africa Arise and Conference organized and hosted here in Rwanda. We thank God for all that He has enabled us to achieve. In the year 2000, when we started this conference, we started by saying, Africa arise. It was prophesying, it was not easy at the time. It is, not even, it is not even either easy today to talk about that. But today even today it is hard to claim that it is the time for Africa to arise and shine when you look at current affairs going on around Africa. For example, in the year 2014, we know that Boko Haram kidnapped more than uh, 276 children, daughters, young girls, and some of them are getting returned now. And so when you see what is happening in Somalia and other parts of Africa, it is hard for someone to believe that it is the time for Africa to arise and shine. The youngest African nation, South Sudan, is now in trouble. We thought the problem was over when they received their independence from the north because of the division, divisions between Muslims and Christians. But now, even today, with their independence, things are not going well. Africa, Although as Africans we are bowing our heads because of these challenges everywhere, God is still saying, Arise, why are you falling on your face? Why have you fallen flat? Arise again. Murebe, 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 Murebe,
muri stade muri mo ni ni stade yapfiriye mu bantu benshi cyane ba uzaba batabara ariko uyu munsi tuyagazemo tuvuga ngo Yesu ni umwana ibyo biduheje byiringiro z'ejo hazaza nevertheless there is still hope if you look at the example of the nation here where you are right now Rwanda particularly the place where we are here in this place in the stadium we had many people killed in this place but today look at the peace around us and so we have the reason to believe that still Africa can rise and shine we have that hope but when we started to say that in the year 2000 at the time in many capitals of Africa there was a lot of weeping even in Rwanda here there was a lot of mourning and a lot of scars of trouble in this country when we stood up and began to claim it is time for Africa to arise, the livelihoods of Africans were simply worsening. Statistics at the time were showing less numbers of African children going to school. Hospitals in Africa at the time were overcrowded with patients that there was no enough room for every patient. Patients had to be laid along the way just like in the days of Jesus when some sick people had to be laid left at the pool of Bethesda. At the time, Africa was troubled by many epidemics in Africa, including HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. Other than those who are dying in war and conflicts, we still had mothers and babies dying during birth. The economy in Africa at the time was terrible. From Cairo to Cape Town and Mogadishu and Dakar, there was nothing to give us hope. The World Bank was calling those years, the years of the 80s and 90s, the lost decade because nothing was moving forward more than 4 million children were believed to never grow beyond the age of 5 there was no hope for them to grow a third of African children were affected by malnutrition one in every three children could not complete their primary education. And no one who had the courage to invest their money in Africa. But at the time, as many Africans and we ourselves in Rwanda continue to pray, God kept telling us, Africa, arise and shine, for your light has come. From that year 2000, we started to organize this conference, Africa Rise, to raise Africa. Briefly, I want to mention quick highlights of the themes of every edition of Africa Rise from the year 2000 to today. The theme for Africa Rise 2000 first edition was Africa Arise and Shine. The 
the year 2001's edition was the same theme Africa arise and shine 2002 the theme was national reconciliation key to healing and development in our nation in 2003, the theme was Africa Step into your destiny. In 2004, the theme was God's vision is our destiny. In 2005, the theme was Africa build the waste places. We said Africa, enlarge the space of your tent. In 2007, the theme was Africa, rebuild the tent of David, which is the tent of worship. In 2008, the theme was Thy Kingdom Has Come. In 2009, the theme was Prepare the Way for the King. In 2010, the theme was The Manifestation of the Sons of God. Was invading the nations with the kingdom culture. In 2012, the theme was Africa arise and shine in your season of jubilee. In 2013, the theme was Africa arise for possessing your gates. In 2014, the theme was the rebirth of a nation. The rebirth of a nation. In 2015, the theme was go in the mighty of yours. In 2016, last year, the theme was Arise and Build. In 2016, This year, the theme is Arise Africa. Get up, why do you lie thus on your face? Brethren, those who do analysis, you are aware that from the year 2000 there are things God has done in Africa already in the last decade Africa was the biggest attractor of foreign direct investment more than other continents Imari isaka miliyare ijana na mirongo inani n'ebyiri y'amadorari yashowe n'abanyafrika ubwabo kandi bayashora muri Africa Africans themselves invested more than 182 billion dollars in Africa invested by Africans themselves nanone asaka miliyare ibihumbi bibiri magana ne 12 n'ibisamadorari yashowe n'abandi bantu batari abanyafrika ariko ashogwa muri Africa and more than 2.4 trillion dollars was invested by non-Africans in Africa. We are talking about foreign investment, not foreign aid. Also from the year 2000, many African nations were able to establish their vision, their roadmaps. 
ibihugu byinshi zashiragaho e programe y'imyaka 5 iyo bita ngo ni plaque kenar imyaka 5 ariko rero ni bintu byarahindutswe mu myaka 2002 bashize ibyo bita ngo ni vision 2020 vision 2025 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 30 ibyo bavuze bose byagiye biba muri bibihe abantu bareba kure now previously many nations used to have vision for only five years but from the year 2000 many african nations began to have long-term vision for example in rwanda we have 2020 vision and other countries have similar vision as well africa this is not only in africa africa we want you we want africa we want by two 2063. It's not, it's not only individual nations that have had their own uh, vision that they have established, but even the African Union itself has established a vision they call the Africa we want by 2063. Now, is this just by coincidence that it is our president here in Rwanda who has been charged with the restructuring of African Union? Isn't this a miracle? This is a miracle from God. A nation that has just been reborn in 23 years. But we can see what God is doing in our country. Let us thank God for what is doing in our country. Rwanda hosted the African Union Summit last year. We believe we even host the UN summit someday, although they abandoned us in the past, but we believe we will host them someday. Praise God. Now this year, 2017, brethren. Imani ashakutkiwa God wants to remind us irrevocably that we Africans, we the servants of God, that we ought to arise and build this continent. There are no others who are going to come and build it. It is us to build this continent. In this conference, we have teachings on the seven mountains. We'll be teaching people and exhorting people to be righteous in all they do, in their professions. To be righteous in their families. To be righteous in the church. To be righteous in education. To be righteous in politics. To be righteous in business. To be righteous in the media. To be righteous in entertainment and sports. And those of you who will participate in the summit, you will learn incredible lessons that are going to help you to gain keys that can help you enter every area where you operate. Now, it is our prayer that God may raise young men and young women who have the right mindset on the seven mountains of influence. Benedata. Brethren, it is time for us to ask God for wisdom that we may be stewards of God who walk in wisdom, who do works of righteousness, perfect and excellent work. There is no doubt that this, this is going to help us to transform our continent. From Cairo in Egypt to Cape Town in South Africa and Mogadishu Somalia to, to 
to Mogadish, from Mogadishu to Dhaka and Senegal, we believe we are going to make this happen. And we are going to raise the banner of Christ who gives life. The gospel is going to be proclaimed and the souls of many are going to be transformed. The spirit of God is going to fill people and there will be re re restoration in the bodies and in the spirit. And so dear Africans, I want to request you, agree with me, let us stand up and say, Africa, arise! Africa arise. Let us shout, Africa arise. Africa haguruka. Africa arise. Africa haguruka. Africa arise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. In the book of Joshua, in the book of Joshua, Chapter 7, verse number 10. And verse 13. Nuku iteka kuya Yosua ti mzuk. Niki gitunye uba uwamye. So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Amistra erivala chumye kukobachi ya piteke kordyanje. Naba tengit. Baka tukwara kuinu za shinga nyue. Baka mziha. And Amen. Verse 11 to 13, Israel has seen and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them, for they have even taken some of their cursed things and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore, unless you destroy their cast from among you. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thou says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. This is a sad story, but also has a lesson for us. It has a lesson for us Africans, which we must learn. A man called Joshua had walked with Moses. From the day he lived with Moses, they had never lost any battle. He walked with Moses and he overcame the nations and the kingdoms. God would descend and fight for them. God would use Moses and use Joshua to defeat the kings before them so that they may find a way to their promised land. Joshua had come out of Egypt as a young man. He knows the ten plants that God unleashed upon Egypt for Egypt to release Israel. He knows the power of God and how God defied the Egyptians because of the Israelites. 
Azibuka ninyanja yakitsitsemo kabiri abisirayeli barambuka abanyegiputa bayirohamamo He knows how the Red Sea was split into two and the Israelites crossed but the Egyptians were drowned Azibuka numanu yamanu tiba mwijura abantu bararya barahaga He knows how manna came life from heaven and people were ate and satisfied Azukunu inye inyoni zamanu tsinware barazinda inyama barahaga He knows how the quails come in their camps and they ate and they were satisfied he knows how the bitter water of Mara was turned into sweet and they drank the water. He knows how they found the 12 springs of water from which they drank the water. He knows how God struck the Americas on their behalf because of the power of God. He knows how the rock had produced water for the people of Israel. He knows how the tabernacle of God was in their midst and how the cloud of God was above the tabernacle of God and the pillar of fire was with them. He knows how the kings resisted Moses and God destroyed them. He knows how the Israelites were attacked by snakes, but when Moses lifted up a bronze snake, everyone who looked at it was healed instantaneously. Joshua knew many secrets than others. He knew the secret between God and man. Because sometimes when Moses came out of the tent of meeting, Joshua would linger in the tent. Joshua knew Moses. He knew his strength and his weakness. He knew how the God of Moses worked. He knew the miracles of God. He knew the heart of God in Israel. He never expected defeat once in his life. The day Moses was bidding farewell to him. The spirit of wisdom and intelligence came upon Joshua. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the power that was upon Moses was imparted upon Joshua. And he said, Joshua, God is going to exhort you. And God did it the following day. Joshua was able to do what Moses had done. He led the Israelites in crossing the Jordan River. Laid by the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant. In the Jordan. Where they had passed. Where they crossed. Right there. Right there. That's where Elijah. That's where Elijah. Struck the mantle. And the Jordan was divided. Right there. That's where John the Baptist. Baptized Jesus. And the spirits come from heaven. And the dove came on the shoulders of Jesus. And a voice spoke from heaven. This is my son whom I love. With whom I'm pleased. Right there. Two thousand years. Joshua had crossed there. He stepped in that place. After one thousand years. Another man called Joshua. Who is Jesus Christ.
The Bible says they crossed the Jordan and came to Gilgal. The city right before them was Jericho. Yeshua again. And Joshua goes. Arazamuk. He climbs the hill from Gilgal. He goes to observe the first city to fall in their hands. When they come to Canaan. After 40 years in the wilderness. When they came to the land, the land was fenced all around. The city of Jericho had walls, strongholds. It was a fortress. Joshua. 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 He himself rose. He was a soldier. He went to witness what the spies had told him, whether it was true. The Bible says Joshua goes. He climbs the hill. When he was about when he was about to see the gate of Jericho, he saw a mighty warrior before him. He had a sword. And Joshua was ready to fight him. He said, I have one question for you before I attack you. Are you for us or are you against us? Joshua knew two things. If this man is our enemy, today I'm going to kill him. But if he's for us, then we will cooperate in the battle. And the man said to Joshua, I have been sent to be the commander of the armies of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Israel was called the people of God. The firstborn of God. The armies of God. Joshua understood that military term. He understood the term I've been sent to be captain over the armies of God, to be commander of the armies of God. And Joshua told him, Now, since I was the commander of the armies, so now you are taking over to be the commander of the armies. I have a question for you. What should I do? And the man said to Joshua, Take off thy shoes, for the place where you stand is holy. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Where you stand is holy ground. Joshua took off his shoes. After taking off his shoes, he worshipped him. And that day, the battle of Jericho was fought by two men. By the people of heaven and by the people in the world. Heaven and the earth came together. They brought their equipment together and they overcame Jericho. The weapons used in heaven are praises. Praising God is home. is giving glory to God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And he said, Now listen, from this moment, the commander of the armies of the Lord, because he has come from heaven, you are not going to fight as men. We are going to use heavenly equipment. As long as you are working with the heaven, you are going to use the weak vessels to defy the strong vessels of men. You are going to use the folly of heaven to overcome the wise of the world. What God is about to do in Africa, it is as if I've been left behind. But God is going to use our folly to shame the strong 
in silence and then blow the trumpet for six days and then on the seventh day the priest carrying the ark of the covenant and seven priests covered seven horns they said after we have gone around the city seven times seven times blow the horns together with the priest carrying the ark of the covenant and then you are going to see simply blow the horn of victory before you defeat you overcome the battle because heaven works in control with the world heaven begins with the praise before you see heaven proclaims before receiving heaven gives thanks before receiving it is different from the way the world operates the eyes of heaven are different to the from the eyes of the world the eyes of the world see mountains but the eyes of heaven see valleys the eyes of men see the sea before them but the eyes of heaven see away in the sea the eyes of the world see darkness but the eyes of heaven see light the eyes of men see weakness but the eyes of heaven we see strength the eyes of men see a virgin made by the eyes of heaven see a conceiving virgin hallelujah hallelujah that's why fighting with heaven cooperating with heaven is incredible it is incredible what you simply need to do it is fellowship with God What seems impeccable will become easy. Your diseases will be healed. Your poverty will vanish. Your famine will go away. The oppression and the pressure will go away. The bondage will be broken. The poor livelihoods will be better. Your disgrace will go away. Your fellowship with God, if you fear God, walking with God, walking with God, will exalt Africa. There are no other people God has given that mission. It is the church. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua invaded Jericho and overcame with the cooperation of the angel of the Lord. And then he said, This seems easy. Let's go and attack I. It is a very small city. Let's take only about two to three thousand soldiers to go and attack the city of Ai. It is a small city. We should get it easily. We don't need to send many people. Let's send a few fighters. They should overcome Ai because we just overcame the biggest. A uh, city of Jericho, I uh, is a small city, it should be easy for us. God had told them, when you overcome Jericho, do not take any plunder from Jericho. Whether gold, silver, anything. 
Do not take any plan. Another instruction. Let Jericho never be built again. But every other city you conquer. You may, you may take plunder, you may take possessions out of the cities. Why Jericho? Because Jericho was the firstborn city that they had conquered in the promised land of Canaan. Israel, so and so because Israel understood what the firstborn meant to them in their law, they understood that Jericho had been given to God as the firstborn city that they had conquered in the promised land. Every firstborn male in Israel, every first animal born, they were sanctified unto the Lord. Of all the twelve tribes of Israel, God chose the tribe of Levi to be his firstborn. That's the way God operated. Now when they entered Canaan, the first city they conquered, so wow. did not belong to them. They should never rebuild it. They should not take any plan for personal use. It is a firstborn to God. Joshua informed the people A man called Achan looked at God, looked at the silver, looked at the possessions, and remembered the hunger of many years in the wilderness. And he said, You never know. Who knows whether we are going to conquer any other city? And so he hid the possessions. No one saw him except God. Because he had touched holy things. Things which God had forbidden them from touching. In brief, the sin of Achan brought loss, brought loss of victory for the people of Israel in Ai. Ai, by when they attacked Ai, of Israel, the Israelites turned their backs to their enemies. And many people perished. They ran and fled for life. And about 36 men died. And about 3,000 men who had gone up to fight came back running. They came and reported to Joshua. They say they have killed some of us. Soldiers have fled. When Joshua heard this, he tore his clothes and fell to the earth before the ark of the Lord till evening. He was with the elders of Israel and they put dust on their heads they were wailing. Joshua was mourning. And he said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought these people over the Jordan River to deliver us into the heart of the Amorites? You protected us, Lord. I never saw us losing any battle. I never saw us chased away. What has befallen us? Yet we 
Kenya in the promised land. That whole day, he had fallen before the Lord, wailing and crying. He had torn his clothes and he was pouring dust on his head. And he was crying. Then the voice of the Lord came to him. And he said, Joshua, why do you lie thus on your face? Zuka, get up. There is a cast things in your midst. Someone has touched the forbidden. Zuka, Get up and sanctify the people today. Sanctify the people. Then you will know they are cast in the middle. Once they are cast and taken out of your midst, I will return in your midst. But as long as you haven't taken it, I'm no longer with you. You will continue to lose. You will continue to lose. You will keep losing the battle. But if you take out they are casting in your, from your midst. Then I'll be with you. That's how they discovered Achan. After they had taken him out of them. Israel, Israel became great again. They overcame. And overcame. And conquered. And kept conquering. People of God, the story of Joshua shows me how Africa has been and how Africa is today. He's the analyst of the history of Africa. Those who have studied Africa's history. We have many stories of victory and loss in Africa. All of you Africans who are here. You at least had a chance to talk to the old men in your communities. The people who lived in Asia past at the time were impoverished by poverty and were in famine and Africa was rich in food. Abraham came down to Africa and he acquired a lot of wealth. In Jewish Rabbi's right. books, writings. In their writings, they say that when Abraham came to Africa, 
Amaze kuwesha kwa Sara ali mshikiwe. After lying that Sarah was his sister, umwami wa muri Africa, the king of Africa in Africa at the time, yarababaye cyane amani kwa Abraham ya mubeshi. Was offended when he learned that Abraham had lied to him. Arangisha namubira ngo. And then he said to him, "Kuchi wa mubeshi. Why did you lie to me?" Abraham aramubira ngo narizi ko hano hataba gutinyima. Abraham said to him, I thought there was no fear of the Lord in this place. And he said, no, we fear God here. And now this is what you need to do. I will give you wealth so that you may go back. Another thing I will give you, I will give you my own daughter. I will give her as a ransom. For what I have done for you. Take your wife, I know. And the king took his daughter. And gave his daughter, the king gave his daughter to Abraham to be his nun. In Jewish rabbi's writings, they say that that daughter of the king, her name was Hagar. Hagar, yaro mukoga umami, gumuri misiri, wagi muri muri Palestine, muri ikanan, igihe Abraham yagi. Hagar was the daughter of the king of Egypt who had gone to Canaan when Abraham went there. Abraham. Abraham gave birth to sons with another wife called Keturah. Some of the descendants of Keturah, of Abraham's sons from Keturah, was called Afer. Abraham, Africa which was reminding Abraham about Africa. Which analysts say that the word Africa originates from that word of the descendant of Keturah whose name was Afer. Africa. Jacob also came to Africa. Mugiugu Chakush. In the land of Kush. Arasa Arhatura. Ichogi Africa ikomeye. At the time Africa was prominent. Tufite inguruzi komeye. Kwa Africa ikeze kukua umukawa nuta sanzu. We have many stories, many accounts that talk about the greatness of Africa in the past. Those who are being stricken by famine in Africa fed them. Those who fled from the sword, Africa gave them shelter. King Rehoboam fled to Africa and was given shelter. He, he, he fled from Rehoboam and he came to Africa. Africa, Even Jesus took refuge in Africa when he was a baby. Historians say Africa has taught people how to read and write. Africa has taught people mathematics and medicine. Africa, if Africa has historical accounts of greatness. 3,000 years ago, Africa was a great country. Zimbabwe was great. Zimbabwe Zimbabwe had stone buildings made of stones, which is where you have the word Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. And so we see that Africa, in its history, in her history, she has greatness that we have always heard about. There came a time when Africa became weak. The European civilization was born from Africa. People who wrote great books, St. Augustine, his book, 
the city of God which is attached to the city of God the king of Europe called Salem a king in Europe called Salomon took that book of Augustine and read that book after reading the book he applied the teachings of the book and Europe the European civilization was built on the book built by St. Augustine that's what helped Calvin Jean Calvin, Jean Calvin, Jean Calvin, Jean Calvin to build the city of Geneva that book helped Abraham Quinter to build the Netherlands we have the historical records of Africa in the first century in the city of Antioch where Africans who had come from Benghazi from Cyrene including Simon the Niger which is where we get the word Niger and Nigeria Simon Niger Simon the Nigger. He's the one who commissioned Paul and Barnabas on evangelistic missions. He was with Lucius. These were African young men full of the power of the Holy Ghost. They prophesied over Barnabas and Paul to go and start missions. Who sent Paul to missions? It was Simon the Nigger. He was an African prophet. And who raised Paul in the gospel? It is the wife of Simon who had helped to carry the cross with Jesus when Jesus was taking his cross to crucifixion. Simon had two sons. One was Alexander and Lucius. Rufi, Rufi, Rufi and Alexander were a Simon who many kuren. Rufi and Alexander were sons of Simon the Alexandrian. Umugorewe, his wife, knew what is the poor and the kiswa Americans in Aima. Mentored Paul when he was still young in salvation. Paul and Rufi were making the most of Rome. Go, Musa and Mukiri say Rufi. Paul talks about in the book of Romans and says, Take my greetings to the mother of Alexander. He's, she's the one who mentored me in the gospel. Alexander Yakoziki. What did Alexander do? Alexander Alexander, the son of Simon, Simon who helped Jesus to carry the cross, is the one who took the gospel to England for the first time. The revival that came to England was taken by an African missionary. Brethren, Africa was was great. He became victorious. She helped people. She had great historical exploits. Africa is not always about failure. It was a continent of women and men of valor. People take the civilization in Africa to other parts of the world. The University of Carthage was a powerful school. In Tunisia, that university trained many Europeans. St. Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo, was a powerful man. The Queen of Sheba had come from Africa. It's not just the modern Africa we hear today. It was almost the whole continent of Africa. The eunuch of the Queen of Candace, they would go from Africa to go worship in Jerusalem. They would travel from Khartoum in Sudan and through Ituri, Congo. The Candace kingdom spread across Angola and Tanzania. Africa, 
Africa was promised. Africa was known. Had different names. They used to call it the land of Ham. They also called it the land of Kush. It was also known as Ethiopia. It was also known as Sheba. It was also used collectively. Known as Egypt, it was known as the powerful continent. Civilization the, world. the Egyptian civilization was powerful, it was powerful. They were prominent, they had a word in the world affairs. Africa would invade and win the battle. Africa invaded Jerusalem many times. Africa invaded many other Asian nations. It had men of incredible intelligence. It worked with God one day. It worked with God. Africa was civilized in her time. Until the 4th century. And the 5th century. Africa started wicked. Because of the Arabian War. Because Africans had given hospitality to Arabs. Because Arabs were cousins of Africa. They were descendants of Hagar, an African daughter. And remember, others came from Midian. From Jethro, who was an Ethiopian man. The children of Moses themselves were a mixture of Africans and Jews. Africa was hospitable to many people. As when Arabs come to Africa, beginning with North Africa, Africa began to lose her strength. And others came down because of fear below the, the, in the sub-Saharan Africa. And they started to trouble Africa. That's when powerful universities emerged. In Mali, in Tombukutu, they would interpret the Egyptian language and Egyptian writing. The river Nile is known more than Tigris and other rivers. And the source of the Nile is in this area, Rwanda, Burundi, and Uganda. The region where you stand now, Africa used to be great. Africa was known Africa was was but To get down and they began to use spiritual incantations. To the extent that even our soccer teams in Africa, when others are busy training professionally, our African football players simply go to worship their ancestors thinking they will get victory in the games. We will never get victory unless we stop that. When many leaders of other nations spend time thinking for their nations, many of the African leaders spend their nights with the witch doctors trying to inquire from them. Africa 
When other businessmen spend time thinking about how to strategize their business, African businessmen are going to the waters in the night to inquire from the spirits. They sleep with snakes and walk with snakes. Everything they can't understand, they claim this is witchcraft. Anything they don't understand well, they will claim this is spiritual. Demons. While others are conducting research to find out about this particular problem, but we Africans are going to inquire from the witch doctors. And Joshua bowed down and Cried. And God said, Arise and take away their cast from your midst. Africa. Africa. Let us take out the poison from our midst. Let us take away idolatry from our midst. Let us take away sin from our midst. Our time to arise has come. Our time to arise has come again. Our time to arise has come again. Our time has come. Africa, 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 Africa. Zuka, Ara, Zuka, Ara. This is your season. This is your hour. This is your day. Africa, Africa, Haburuka, Ara. said a powerful word to him. He said, why do you lie thus on your face? He was holding his face, lying down on his face. That's how most African intellectuals are today. In other countries, they will go and become pilots, but they can't do that in their countries. Africans will go to other countries and teach people how to go to the moon, but they can't do the same in their countries. When they talk about Africa, you simply hide your face. We cannot do anything significant in Africa. We have great men of intellectuals. All the men who are here who have come to teach you are intellectuals. These are doctors and professors. They are educated. They go to other countries and they receive them. But in Africa, they won't receive them. They can't change much in Africa. Africa is hiding her thing. We have a shame to be called African because of the corruption in Africa. For you to get a small service, you have to toil for it. For you to get a passport which is your right to possess it, you have to bribe the officials. There are some nations in Africa where you take aid to help the poor there, instead you end up losing anything that you took for the poor. A, a French person will go to Belgium without a visa. A Belgian will go to Denmark without a visa. A Germany goes to America without a visa. An American goes to Australia without a visa. But an African will go to another African country and be denied entry unless they have visa. They will spend hours at the airport. They spend hours waiting. It is not easy to find connecting flights within Africa. Many nations are in trouble now. For example, for you to come from Cameroon to go to Chad, you may have to go through Addis Ababa or through Kigali. 
It is shameful, brother. We are bowing on our heads. We are ashamed. We still have children affected by malnutrition in the, in the 21st century. We still have people who walk with no shoes. We still have people living in huts that have no electricity and are attacked by mosquitoes. We still have issues of food security. We still bathe once in a day. We still have one pair of clothes for a whole week. You can't talk about poor service. Everything you tell an African about, they will tell you, feed me first. When you want to talk to them about any business, they will tell you, please, I have no food first. Africa. Africa. Why do you lie thus on your face? They are from South Africa. But they can't do the same in their own country. What has happened, brethren? What has happened, brethren? Let us take out their cast from our midst. Let us take out Achan from our midst. In the name of Jesus. And then, God is telling us, Arise, get up. Your time has come. Use what you learn. Use what you know. I see the future Africa has men and women, has daughters and sons who have risen up, who are no longer hiding their face. Instead, who are showing the true identity of Africa. Africa. We are about to see Africa that is going to be like other continents. But more to that, I see an Africa built upon God. An Africa built upon the foundation of God. I see men and women of God on every mountain. Great churches in Africa are going to be servants of God. Great African billionaire businessmen are going to be servants of God. I see great doctors, great physicians in Africa being servants of God. I see great media companies like more than CNN and Al Jazeera led by servants of God. I see top sportsmen and women performing at the top level being Africans who are full of the power of God. Let me tell you, Africa, Africa is going to have one central bank. Write this prophecy. That African central bank will be led, will be shared, will be governed by a believer, a born again believer. There's gonna be a central bank in Africa that will be governed by a born again believer. Benedata. Brethren, Namuna Africa. I see Africa that is walking. Namuna Africa. I see Africa. 
attracting people. I see Africa. Show the people of God. I see Africa. Daughters of Africa and sons of Africa will not be homosexuals. In the name of Jesus. No African daughters and sons will be homosexuals. We cast homosexuality out of Africa in the name of Jesus. Get out of the disgrace. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift up our hands to sing and pray. God will bring Africa to you. We show you our Africa. We lay her into our hands. We ask for a blessing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My brother, my sister, tonight, before you will go home, if you are here and you want Jesus to touch you, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, Come forward, we want to pray for you. We know Yesu. Come and receive Jesus. We know Yesu. Come and receive Jesus. We know Come and encounter Jesus. Take a step and come forward running. We know Come running now. If you want to be praying, you have a desire. We know Yesu. If you have a desire to receive Jesus, come here for prayer. Yes, Jesus will bless you. And those of you who are watching us yes, now, Jesus is with you. Come running now. Come to Jesus. We are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. Come now. Come running. Come running. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come running. We know Come running. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come running. Jesus wants to bless you. He wants to take you out of this grace. From your bondage, you need to be free. Come. Jesus wants to bless you. Et l'Afrique sera sauvée. Et l'Afrique sera sauvée. Oui, que c'est
Thank you for coming to receive Jesus. And he's going to bless you. You made the right choice. You made the right choice. Bow your heads for prayer. Repeat to say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. If I have sinned. My sins. Cleanse yeah. me with your blood. A sinless blood. Purify my heart. Enter in my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Of my soul. Thank you. For entering my heart. And setting me free. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. God of power almighty. In this moment, these children have committed to walk with you. I ask you to overcome the evil one in their lives. Overcome Satan in the name of Jesus. Satan be defeated. Satan be defeated in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus rule their lives. Thank you for setting them free in water from diseases, from sin, from every trouble, from unemployment, from lack of knowledge, source, all of them, thank you for setting them free, in the name of Jesus, Amen, Amen, listen, your sins are forgiven, Right now you are just like an angel. If the Lord Jesus came right now, you'd go to heaven straight. You could go to heaven right now. Now Jesus wants you to maintain your life like that. And we want to help you in that. Please, Please, go. Please go to that team for them to register your name so we can follow up with you. In a short moment, just go there. Let them help you quickly. We will help you. Brethren, let's give the glory to Jesus. Heaven is celebrating now. Heaven is rejoicing now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!